My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and for today's Everyday Office, I'd like to do a quick Q&A with Neil. A uh, new email just came in today, and I decided, you know what, I'll go ahead and record the answer to this right now for today's session. So the question was, can I do conditional formatting based off of dates going by? So for example, um, you might want to highlight dates that are very, very near to happening. You might want to highlight dates that are a certain amount past, uh, past your current date, um, things like that. The specific question was, can I highlight the values after they go nine months in the past. So nine months ago, whatever that was from today, can we make sure to color code that? Can we make them turn red or, or whatever we're looking to have happen? So I'm going to do this a couple of different ways to show how it can be done um, simply and then in a slightly more complicated way. The simplest possible way is, let's say that the question was, I want to know how to make something change color when it's nine months in the past. Well, if we simply do the raw math that everybody does, that a month is on average about 30 days, and we say that nine months is, uh, you know, nine times 30, of course, that's 270 days, right? So what you want to know is, the function for today, which will tell you what today's date is. And in, in current moment, it's uh, August 21st, right? So take today, which is August 21st, and subtract 270 days. Now, it's not always going to be perfect. As you can see here, if I've gone with 270 as being nine months, we're three days off from being a perfect nine month calendar in the past. But this is an easy way to make it happen. So let's try this out. What we do is we highlight the cells that we're interested in. We use the conditional formatting drop down menu and don't choose any of the options that are here. Instead, go down to new rule. And the rule we're going to do is something based off of a formula. So what we're looking for is for, let's do an equal sign today, open parentheses, close parentheses. So we start off with today's date. Okay, so today's date minus 270. That would be nine months ago, right? So that's, um, that is uh, roughly November, the middle of November in 2016. What we want to know is, is that greater than or equal to the date in question. If it is, then that means it's farther back in the past. So greater than or equal to the date that we're talking about, and then we can just choose this one that's highlighted. So notice here, I selected all the values, but this one right here is white. This is the one that we initially selected. So we come back here and we click directly on that cell right there. Now we don't want it to always be a five. Notice the dollar sign in front of the A and the dollar sign in front of the five. That lets us know that we're always comparing against this cell, not any of the other cells. I want to compare it against a six, then a seven, then a eight. And so the dollar sign that's in front of the number five here needs to go away. So now what you're saying is across the board, across this entire list of values, look at cell A5 for the fifth row, then look at cell A6 for the sixth row and on down the line. And let me know if that's less than the value of 270 days ago. Is it less than November of 2016? If it is, let's go here to format and let's just change the fill color to nice bright yellow color. Click OK and click OK. And just like that, you see here that if we're talking about November of 2016, June of 2016, January of 2016, February of 2016, those dates are all far enough in the past, October of 2016, that they are going to highlight for me. But like I said, that's just a little bit sloppy because 270 days isn't perfect. What she was actually asking for is, if it's August 21st, I want November 21st. 
Now you can put that directly into your conditional formatting function, um, but it's easier to do it right here on the page and then to use that moving forward. So let's try this out. If we take today's date, we'll just put in equal sign T-O-D-A-Y open close parentheses. We want to know what is nine months in the past. Now what we're going to do to make that happen is we're going to subtract nine months but use the same day value. For this, Excel has a beautiful little function called eDate, which stands for expiration date, I believe. So what I'm going to do here is go to my Formulas tab, top of the screen, use the Date and Time drop-down menu, and choose eDate. And with eDate, you see it says, okay, tell me when the current date is, or the start date. We're going to use today's date there. And now tell me how many months before this date or how many in the months after this date you want to go. So we're going to go minus nine. When I click OK, and then notice it's just a 42,000 type number, what you do is you go to the Home tab and you format this on the drop down menu here as a date. And you can see there, that's how we get nine, day, nine months in the past. We take the current value and we subtract nine months from it, giving us 11-21-2016. So now watch me as I use this. I'm going to highlight these values Go to Conditional Formatting, and I'm just going to clear the rules from those cells. So we'll go back and do this again. Conditional Formatting, New Rule, Use a Formula, and then what we want is to compare is this date, and remember we want to do the fifth row, and then the sixth row, and then the seventh row, so we don't want the dollar sign in front of the five. So dollar sign A5, is it uh, less than or equal to this value, 11 21 2016 Click Format. Let's just use a different color so it's obvious here. We'll use this kind of orange color. Click OK and click OK. You have nearly the same, probably the exact same values highlighted, but now it's comparing it against 11-21-2016 instead of the more arbitrary 270 days in the past. Now, another thing that you might decide to do with the same basic principle is to compare this against like the current date and say, hey, is it 30 days in the future? Uh, so what we'll do there is one more conditional formatting run. Go to the conditional formatting drop-down menu, choose New Rule, and use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now here are the two things I want to say about this. It needs to be equal to or greater than today's date, definitely. So it needs to be a date in the future, but not too far in the future, in the next 30 days. So to make this happen, we use the AND function. The AND function says, okay, we'll take the event date in cell A5. Once again, we take the dollar sign off of the 5 here. So it's just dollar sign A5. Is it greater than or equal to today's date? That's the first question. It has to be in the future. But in addition to being in the future, it needs to be, so we'll go back to A5. Take the dollar sign off. It needs to be less than or equal to today plus 30. So it needs to be both of those two things. It needs to be greater than today's date, but it needs to be less than today's date plus 30. So is it happening in the next 30 days? Hit the Format button, turn that red, click OK, click OK. Hey, look at that. Two things are coming up in the next 30 days. Since it's the 21st of August right now, as, as I speak, here the 24th of August and the 8th of uh, September both get highlighted in red. And so that's how you can use the Today function, the conditional formatting tools, and in this case, a function called eDate to figure out how far in the future or how far in the past something is 
and color code it as a part of that.